Welcome now into Studio B for the first time as a BYU coach, Jay Hill. It's Ashton's dad. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good to be in here with you guys, with her. It's uh, been a whirlwind, but it's good yeah. to be here. I was yeah. just going to ask you, how would you explain, let's say, the last 72 hours of your life? Um, crazy. It was... Uh, it was exciting in a lot of aspects. It was fun just to, you know, get down to the nitty gritty with Kalani and, and uh, coming here, telling your team that you're leaving is extremely difficult. Mm. And the guys that you grew to love and everything about that program and what we built there to leave it um, is hard. And then I came down here yesterday and it was so exciting and, and you're rapping or you're trying to get going on everything here. And then I had to go back up there late last night and get my office packed up and um, it, so it's kind of gone back and forth, bittersweet, but super excited about everything here and, and what this place is. And that commute's going to be uh, fun for a little while, I assume. <laughs> Especially if it keeps snowing like Jeez. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Okay, you mentioned it in the press conference, uh, and we showed it yesterday, but um, you invested heavily at Weber State. To be there nine years meant a lot. Um, what, what did it take for you to, to make that decision? Because I know it was hard having put in so much there and had so much success, but here comes this opportunity with BYU. Well, I, th I think this profession's still all about the people, and that's what made it hard, right, is I had a group of assistant coaches that I absolutely love that have given their all to me and to the program and everything that we were building there. The players were exactly the same thing, that they had just given so much to us. So to leave it is hard, to leave those guys that you care about so much um, is difficult, but it's part of the profession, and it's it's what we needed to do for our career, and it was something that we felt strongly about coming here and going into the Big 12 was super exciting. Being with Kalani and Aaron Roderick and Fessy and Steve Clark and all those guys that I've worked with before is super exciting. So uh, it made sense, and uh, we're geeked to be here. Kalani and your relationship with Kalani obviously played a huge part in all of this, and I know Kalani, he likes to joke, and, and I'm sure through the years he's like, hey, how's it going, man? How are you, how are you doing down there in Ogden? So at what point in this timeline did it change to where you're seriously considering what Kalani's putting on the table? Well, I think it's always those uh, conversations that, are, that you're having where we kept a close relationship, but jobs were never mentioned. Um, working together at some point in our careers again was always um, something that could happen. We knew that, uh, but the reality was this thing really never took off hard until the last couple of days. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say, I've, I've got some Weber State friends. I, I grew up in Clinton, Utah, Yeah. Okay, in, in the <laughs> shadows of Weber State, yep. that are feeling mixed emotions right now because they're BYU fans and Weber State fans. And so they're like, it's terrible for one program, but it's very exciting for BYU. How, how do you manage um, yeah, those emotions as you push forward and, and, and dive into one entity and, and kind of just end the chapter? Well, one, I hope and pray that the right guy gets put in place at Weber State and that the program continues to get better. That's one thing I hope for. Uh, but uh, I need to focus 100% of my time and attention and everything that we're doing now here at BYU. There's, there's the players, there's the coaches, there's everything that needs to go on in recruiting. Um, our focus and attention needs to be here. I was intrigued and delighted to hear that you grew up a BYU fan, didn't know that. <laughs> you end up obviously going to Utah, playing there, coaching there, and so on. And, uh, you know, we got to know your daughter, Ashton, who worked here. She's in the studio. What's up, Ashton? Um, and we were like, oh, we got Ashton to BYU. This is cool. We love Jay Hill. What softening uh, of the sort of <laughs> BYU-ness did Ashton play in this in the family? Well, she did, right? I mean, uh, just her being here and the education she received here and all the exciting things that happened here at BYU Sports TV and everything um, that she did here. I think that there was a softening process there. And thanks, Ashton. We appreciate it. Yes, yes, thanks, <laughs> Ashton. Um, but bottom line, um, it's something that we've always been familiar with. I mean, even at the University of Utah, you're not that far removed from – BYU. Sure. I mean, you're playing each other every year, and the competitions that were going on when I was there were always real. And it's like it's not like you were ever that far removed from it. What's agenda item number one for you? You say you dive right in. So, like, what's at the top of the list for you right now? Um, getting to know the players that are currently here. They deserve that. 
uh, given them the chance to feel like they really, in one way, get a fresh start. Um, I'm not going to hold anything against them, what's happened in the past, or give them the credit for what's happened in the past. Everyone's going to get a new start. Every, there's going to be tons of competition. I'm going to expect that. Uh, but getting to know them will be big. And then I guess 1B right under that would be we got to get going on recruiting, making sure we have the best possible talent possible because we're going into a new league, as everyone knows, and it's going to be very, very competitive. Uh, yesterday there's the press conference. Kalani last night is uh, with a high-profile tight end in Arizona. I mean, you got to get out there. You've invested heavily in the state of Utah. What is it about the state? We've seen the talent grow uh, immensely, almost as much as the real estate in the state in the last 10 years. What has it been like for you to invest in that, and what do you expect in terms of reaping those benefits of those relationships? Well, I think that that's a critical part of recruiting. you got to take care of your own backyard, and continuing to recruit the state of Utah will be big for BYU, as it always has been, and Kalani's done a phenomenal job with that. Um, so, yeah, we've invested in it. It continues to get better. The high school coaching in the state of Utah gets better and better. The caliber of player continues to get better and better. And now I will say this, the competition in recruiting has got way harder. And we've got every team in the country coming to the state of Utah now recruiting. And so that's got harder. But, I mean, that's part of it. We've got to defend our own turf. Jay Hill, the associate head coach and defensive coordinator at BYU, is with us on BYU Sports Nation. You look good in blue, by the way, in that graphic. That's <laughs> Kalani, the first Kalani thing that stuck out to me. You look My great wife in was blue. just making fair fun of what I was wearing. So, <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> All good. We approve. We approve. Uh, the timeline for filling in the defensive group, because you announced that Gennaro Guilford's going to stay, and he specializes yep. with the cornerbacks. So there's questions about safeties and linebackers. Will there be multiple linebacker coaches, -line. defensive line yeah. coach? When do you hope to have all of that in place? Well, I would say for sure in the next couple weeks, uh, Kalani and I will continue to work tirelessly on getting the best guys here that represent the program, that will do a great job in recruiting, that will take care of the players that are currently here, do a good job of teaching the schemes that we're going to install. Um, but I, I don't feel like you have to make this decision in the next day or two. We got to make sure that the decision we make are the right guys that are going to come in here and continue to build the program the right way. Um, yesterday on, uh, with Scotty G and Hans, you mentioned the following adjectives for the type of defense you want to play. Aggressive, attacking, confusing. What is it about those three that you love and want to put in? Well, I, I've never been a guy that sits back and wants to bleed a slow death. That is not me. Um, I refuse to do that. I will blitz. I will put every guy at the line of scrimmage rather than just sit there and let people pound us. So th that's not my philosophy. Now, you've got to have the right guys to do that. But uh, that's where the attacking comes in is we will try to get them in second, third, and long situations, put them in uh, situations where they've got to throw the ball on third and long, and then that's usually when people make a lot of mistakes. Uh, we try to confuse quarterbacks with our coverage, blitzes, the different things that they have to see. You know, some quarterbacks don't mind playing against drop eight, and some quarterbacks hate being blitzed, and others don't mind being blitzed, but they hate throwing into coverage. And you have to do a good job of going in and assessing who you're playing. And if you don't have the ability to be multiple and all those things that you just mentioned, then I think it gets hard to be elite. There are a handful of former BYU guys, linebackers specifically, David Nixon, Brian Keel, Kyle Van Noy, all very excited, very public on their social medias about you joining. And they want to know, are we going to run a 4-3? Are we going to run a 3-4? Uh, what do you lean toward in that conversation? Well, I, I think a lot of it depends on what's the offense doing. I mean, there's going to be times where we're in a three down, and then there's going to be times where we have to base everything we're doing out of a four down so that we can be a little bit more stout. One thing I believe, in the state of Utah, you can recruit great defensive linemen. And so why we wouldn't put four of those guys on the field doesn't make a lot of sense. If you look at BYU's roster right now, they have phenomenal linebackers. And so we got to get those guys on the field. So we've got to be able to be multiple. Uh, I would say our defense is base, based out of a four down front. And then with the ability, especially on third down, to be able to get into three down stuff and bring pressures from different angles and areas. But... Um, I know one thing, we got to bolster the front. we got to get playing with the big guys the way we need to play. And it's music to our ears to hear the talk about the D-line because certainly that's been a missing piece, I think, over the last several years. BYU's had good defenses, yeah. but the biggest difference between Utah and BYU defensively to me is those D-linemen. So, uh, hey, I'm excited, Jay. Okay, with the Big 12, how much of a learning curve do you expect for BYU to have in terms of not only on the field wins and losses, but recruiting and what it's like in those states and sort of, 
what those offenses uh, tend to do and whatnot. Yeah, I don't think that that's a huge learning curve, in my opinion. They've been scheming great defenses for years now, and they've been scheming great offenses for years now. Will there be a step up in talent consistently each week? Absolutely. Do the games, uh, every game's going to be big, and every opponent's going to be big, and every stadium you're going to go into is going to have a good atmosphere. And so are there going to be some changes that way? Yes, but it's no different than what they've experienced in some of the road games that they've had in the past, no different than some of the opponents they brought in the last couple years. It's that, that ain't going to be a big learning curve. Jay Hill is with us on BYU Sports Nation, looking fabulous in blue and white. And uh, I think uh, the biggest question mark, maybe, maybe for you as you go into this new role, is, okay, well, how is my role going to shift going from a head coach to an associate head coach and defensive coordinator? So what are you anticipating will be the biggest changes as you take on a new role with Kalani Satake? Well, just that, my biggest role right now is supporting Kalani and what he envisions for the program. And he's the head coach. He's going to direct and show us what he most wants done. And then that's my role to make sure that we implement it the way that he wants done. Uh, the great thing about Kalani, he gives us tons of freedom to run our side of the ball the way that we want to do it. That was something very intriguing to me, that we can come in and run it that way. Uh, a shout out to Aaron Roderick. I think he's done a phenomenal job here with the offense. He's extremely smart. I think they've done a great job. I went to practice last night. They got some dudes, that offensive line, and uh, just not just there, the wide receiver crew. Uh, Jaron obviously has had a phenomenal career. They've done a, a great job of building that offense, and there's a lot of guys in the pipeline coming up through that. And that's exciting to me that working with A-Rod and the offensive side of the ball and with Kalani to build his vision on what this can become, I think is exciting. It's a new era with a new DC, so we're excited. We do want to make sure you uh, feel welcome here at BYU. Okay. So uh, we got you a swag uh, box. Heck yeah. We got all kinds of <laughs> BYU Sports Nation stuff in there for you. I was just telling them today that my, my closet, I cleaned out all my closet from the Adidas gear. And because I can't wear it anymore, so, <laughs> so a transition to Nike is going to be Nike. big. So we thank got Nike. We got some Nike for you. Thank it. you so much. Welcome, Jay. We're excited yeah. to have you. Man. Heck yeah! Can't yeah. wait. Super stoked, Jay. Thanks for the time. We appreciate it in your busy schedule. <laughs> thank you. Let's guys. go. He's got the swag box. He's got the swag now. More, hey, more blue. That's more what we blue. need here. More blue. That's what we need. Mom and family some swag boxes too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see a couple boxes over there. Okay.